Hello, everyone. Today, I thought of sharing my experience and wanted to discuss on the interview questions and answers today. So many of you might be looking for a new job change or you want to get into a new job role. Maybe you are currently working as a consultant, but you are working as a support consultant. You never got any opportunity to work in any implementation project in real time. So how and what are the different activities we have in implementation? And if suppose you are working as an end user and if you are looking to get into a consulting role, so this is the session for you. Or if you are a fresh or if you are a beginner, this will be the best session for you to understand how the implementation project works. What are the different activities we have? Because nowadays, if you are going to attend any interview, the interviewer will expect, this is the trend, guys. So the interviewer will expect that you will have some implementation project experience. If not end-to-end, -end, at least they will expect that you should know the basics of implementation. What we do in implementation project. What are the different type of project we have? In which server which we work? What are the different uh, you know, application we are using? And what are the use of that? Okay. And what are the different methodology which we are using to implement? What are the different timeline we have? Or what is the timeline to complete a particular project? how the project time line has been fixed, right? So these are the basic things has been, you know, uh, expected by any interviewer. Fine. So let's get started. So these are the different type of projects which we have. So we will discuss on the type of project, type of servers and the applications. Okay. Now, what is the different, what are the different type of projects we have? So you can see these are the different type of project which we use in the industry scene. Implementation project, rollout project, support project, development project, upgrade project, and the conversion. Okay. Now, what is implementation project? So, when we talk about the implementation project, that means currently the customer is using some other ERP software or they are not using any ERP. They are just running or controlling their business from, the, from any Excel sheet. So, it depends on them. But now your client or your customer is expecting to run all the transactions in SAP system. That means we are going to develop a new SAP system for the client and client so that the client can execute all their transactions, whether they will create the order, the purchase order, production order, their, you know, the finance, financial transactions, their HR activities, everything they want to do it through the SAP system. So that is your implementation project, okay, where we are going to install a new software and we are going to develop a new software based on uh, their requirements. Then coming to the rollout project. So what is rollout project? Means rollout project means implementation is done. Until the implementation is not done, that project is not called as a rollout project. Implement means rollout means once the implementation is done, means SAP is already there for the customer. Customers are all uh, using SAP. Maybe for different different locations they are using. Maybe uh, they are using in US, they are using in UK and they have plant in uh, India also. Maybe in Mumbai they have the plant and they are uh, all the users and the Mumbai plant uh, resources or the employees. Everybody is using SAP. But now your customer is planning to start a new plant in Hyderabad. Okay. That means Company is same. They are just extending or they are creating a new plan to run or they, they want to extend their business. That means when they are starting a new plant in Hyderabad, so they also need to uh, like you know develop SAP system to this particular location, right? So the, if you are working in these type of projects where SAP is already there and they are going to start a new plant and you are working for that particular plant whatever the project or whatever the activities will happen for that particular location, that type of project is called as a rollout project, okay? Then coming to the support project. So what is support project? So when we talk about support project, that means again, implementation is done. So implementation is heart of all the projects, okay? So implementation is done. Now your client, your customer is using SAP software, but during uh, the during uh, 
or uh, when they are using, when the customers are using SAP software, they might be facing some issues. Maybe when they are creating a purchase order or they are creating some purchase requisition, they are facing some issues. Maybe they are trying to enter some quantity, but that quantity is not picking properly in the system. Maybe the price which they are maintaining in the purchase order is not uh, updating properly. So those kind of issues will come. So when the users will face this issue, they don't know how to resolve these issues. So what they will do, they will reach out to the consulting team. So they will raise a support ticket and the support uh, ticket will be uh, you know, now received by the consulting team and they will work on that. So basically, the support team will be, um, support to the customer in their day-to-day -day business transactions. Okay. So if you're working in that type of project, that is called a support project. Okay. The next year development. Development project means, again, implementation is already there in place. Okay. But what the customer is expecting now is they want to change some functionality. What type of functionality they want to change? Maybe they want to change some standard functionality. So some functionality are already there in the system. Maybe they have different different uh, type of uh, document type they have. But they want to develop some new functionality based on their business requirement. So those type of projects are called development projects. Okay? The next is the upgrade project or the upgradation project. Upgrade project means simple it is the use of this is maybe your client is using some old version and then now they want to upgrade to the new version. This is the best, best example. Okay. For example, like maybe your customer is using 1909 version now and they want to upgrade it into the 2020 version. So S4, in S4, we have different, different version, right? So those kind of projects are called the upgrade project. Okay. And the system conversion. What is system conversion? Again, it will uh, depend on your customer when they want to upgrade their uh, ERP system. Maybe from currently they are uh, working on SAP ECC, R3 and EHP 6, 7, 8, whatever they are using. And from there, now they want to move to or they want to update to the S4 HANA system. So these are the different, different type of projects which we get in the industry. Okay, so it depends what in which project you are working on. But for all the project, the part of the projects is your implementation work, where you are doing each and every uh, transaction in each and every activity. Okay, now when you are working in any project, how are you working and when are you developing? Right, so when you are working in the project, you are working in which application? whether you are working in on-premise or on-cloud or hybrid. Now, what is on-premise, what is on-cloud and what is hybrid? Now, it is depend because in the interview, they can ask whether you are, you have worked in on-premise application or you, are, you have worked on on-cloud or hybrid. They can ask either of this. Now, it depends based on your experience, what have you done? If you have implement, if you have worked in implementation project and if you are saying that I have worked in on-premise, then the interviewer will definitely be asked, right? what have you done? And what is the difference between on-premise and on-cloud application? So on-premise is basically, you know, if your client is going for on-premise, that means they have to pay for the server cost. Means the entire maintenance will be depend and whatever the cost will be there, they have to pay. But the advantage of on-premise is whatever they want to do, whatever customization they want to do, they will do it. In this case, the server, whatever the server they are procuring, will be installed at the client location. For example, suppose your client is from US and you are working in India. Right? So where the uh, server will be installed? Server will be installed in your client location. So if your client is from US, so in US, what, wherever their office is there, in that location, the server will be installed. So that is your on-premise project. Or, sorry, in that case, you will be working in your on-premise application. But advantage of on-premise is you can customize your system as per the business requirement. But when we talk about the on-cloud, so on-cloud means what? On-cloud means the server will be installed somewhere. No need to worry where it is installed. You can get connected into S4 HANA system. 
that's it the disadvantage of on cloud is you cannot do much customization as you do in the on premise so that's the reason we give both the options to the customer if based, suppose, suppose based on their requirement whatever they are expecting from sap maybe those requirement will fulfill on on premise then the customer will go for the on premise only the thing is they have to pay for the uh, server cost right hardware cost whatever it will be they have to pay but they can do lot of customization and they can fulfill their requirement so in on cloud the cost will be quite less and it will be based on the subscription like monthly basis quarterly basis or yearly basis they will pay according to that so here at a time they have to pay but here quarterly basis or monthly basis or yearly basis they can pay and in on cloud the in installation of the server or hardware the customer is not worried about it because it it can be installed anywhere okay and hybrid hybrid application means it is kind of combination of both on cloud and on premise so it depend on the client what are they going to use so it is kind of two in one uh, functionality okay so these are the applications which are there for any industry right and then next is type of server so what are the different type of server where we work so when the project start in which server we start working on so we have three type of servers one is development server quality server and the production mm -hmm. server so when we start configuration in the system in sap system suppose we have gathered all the requirements and now we started working in the system we have started standard functionality uh, we have started configuration for the standard functionality and we started the uh, customization everything we do it in the development system once we have completed all these activity whatever the development or the standard configurations or the customization we have completed uh, so all all those activity we have to do in this development only so once everything is completed all the customization all the configurations we have done in development system server now we have to move to the quality so in development we do only the configuration in quality server we test it whatever the development we have done okay and then once your testing is done you tested each and every transaction you have tested whatever the standard uh, configuration you had uh, completed or whatever the new customization you have done in your development system you have tested each and everything now your system is working fine all the activities whatever the business was expecting is working fine then your quality is done so now that is the the role of your quality server then next is your production so in production what are we doing so production is the server where we hand over the system to the client and means to the customer and the customer start using the system so when it will be there in production that means the users will start using the system so these are the basic things which we should know okay now once it is done now let's move to the methodology part so we have different different method to implement any project okay so when we start implementation project at that time you are uh, so before uh, starting the project itself it is finalized whether the client or the customer will go for the asap methodology or they will go for the go for some other methodology like we have activate methodology so in s4 hana sap prefer to work in the activate methodology now what is the difference between asap methodology and what is the difference between your activate methodology okay so we will discuss now <clears throat> so when we talk about asap methodology that means these are the different phases we have we have prepare preparation phase we have business blueprint phase we have realization phase we have final preparation phase we have go live phase and then finality support so preparation blueprint realization final preparation go live and then support so these are the different phases we have in asap methodology asap methodology we used to work in the sap ecc system when we were working in ecc this this was the like best methodology which we were following 
Okay. So I, I will talk on both ACP methodology and then activate methodology. And then we will talk on the difference between these two. Okay. Now, what is ASAP methodology? ASAP means what? Accelerated SAP methodology. Accelerated means you can, you know, run your business efficiently and optimize, you can optimize your time and the quality and the resources on time. Okay. And you can control your business. Now, coming to the preparation. So these are the different phases. The first phase is preparation phase. So what do we do in preparation phase? So in the preparation phase, basically, this is the first phase where it is completely managed by the management team. Management team means who is, who is the management? It depends. It can be your project manager. It can be your delivery manager, delivery head. So all your management will be there and they will discuss together. They will talk on the resourcing part. They will talk on the leading part, like who will be the project lead, who will be the team lead, who will be the team members will work in this project. So that is the first phase of the project if you're working in SAP methodology. Okay. And once your preparation is done, your management has decided that who will be the project lead, who is the delivery manager, who is the delivery head, who is the delivery lead, and who is the uh, and who is the team lead, and who are the team members, who will be there in on site, who will be working in the client side, who will be working in the offshore, right? So all this discussion will happen in this preparation phase. Once it is done, everything has been finalized. Now all the resources are there uh, are in their place. The next phase is business blueprint phase. So in business blueprint phase, the requirement gathering starts. So means we start understanding the business. So before, uh, so I'm sorry, uh, during your uh, business blueprint activity, when we start our requirement gathering, first of all, we try to understand their current business. What are the current activities they have? What are they doing now? Right. So this is called as is process. So as is means what happening currently, how the customers are running their business now, how they are creating the purchase orders, how they are creating their uh, purchase requisitions, how the approvals are happening, how they are receiving the materials, what are the different different suppliers they have. So first of all, we need to understand their current business from where they're buying the material, whether they are buying it from India or from abroad, if it is from US, from which country, if the, it is, uh, sorry, if, it's, if it is from UK, then uh, in UK from where they are getting it, if it is from Middle East, from which country. So it depends, right? So we need to understand all this first. So that this, this is called your as is process. So once you will understand their current business, their current process, what are they doing? What are they purchasing? What are the material they have? What are the suppliers they have? What are the different type of suppliers they have? Once you will understand all these, based on their requirement or based on your understanding, now you will prepare a document that is called to be document. Okay, after to be document, finally we will prepare a blueprint document. To be document means what? Now in as is document, you understood what are their current business and what are they they're doing in that. Now in 2B, you will compare with their as is and you will plan how that can be completed in or how that can be done in SAP. And based on this, based on your understanding from this as is and 2B document, you will prepare a final document and that is that is called your business blueprint document. Okay, so now from MM side, if you are, if we are a MM consultant, we will be responsible to get all the requirements from where? From the procurement team, from the inventory team, right? So we will get all the requirement from them. So what we will do, we'll get the appointment from them or we will ask them that this is the, uh, because now this is the requirement phase. This is the, uh, sorry, this is the blueprinting phase and uh, we have to understand your business and based on that, we have to prepare the doc document. And also we will expect or uh, we want that what is your expectation from this? Right. So based on the discussion, finally, we will prepare a document. So once we will prepare a document, means when, once we will complete our business blueprint document, then we'll set up a call with the customer and we will show them that. So it's, that will be a kind of meeting. So we will arrange a meeting with the customer and we will show them that 
based on the discussion with the SMEs or the HODs um, during our requirement gathering, this is what we have uh, gathered. And this, these are the requirement which we have prepared in this document. Then the customer will go through that. So from customer side, who will be there? Maybe the uh, all the HODs will be there, definitely. Maybe the MD or CEO, whoever wants to get involved. So all the uh, all the management uh, will be there from the client side. And they will now go through the BVP document, whatever we have prepared. So we will show them from the beginning. Like we'll show them like these are the plant uh, which you have. These are the name of the plant. These are the store, these many storage locations you have. So in, for each plant, these are the storage locations are there. And these, there, these are the name of the storage location. And you have one purchase department. This is the name of the purchase department, right? These are your uh, condition types. Like uh, you are, whenever you are buying the material, these are your uh, conditions which you are using. This is the entire procurement flow. This is the your procurement process of domestic procurement. This is the process flow of import document. This is how you are receiving the material and storing it. So we will show them each and everything, whatever we have uh, gathered or whatever the requirement we have received from the customer and maintained in the business blueprint document or BBP document. Then customer will go through this, go through that. And they may ask, you know, sometimes we will be working together, but we, we uh, miss something. Maybe sometimes the client um, could not tell you properly, or maybe we could not uh, update that in this document or we could not understand. So when this discussion happens, when this discussion starts with the customer, then the customer will now, uh, you know, uh, ask us to make the changes in the blueprint document. So that is your first version of the change. Maybe they will, they will ask, no, there is one more plan and that name is wrong. Please hurry, correct the name, right? There should be few more storage location. You did not visit to that location. You should have see that location. Uh, there are few more storage locations we have. So please maintain that. Then in the process flow, when they will start uh, talking about the procurement process flow, they can ask in the approval process, two more persons should be added. So like that, they will now, uh, means uh, we'll have the discussion with the customer. So once after this discussion, based on the discussion with the customer, we'll make the notes of all the points and then we will wrap up the session. And then again, as a consult. So now this is our activity. Now, in the same way, all the module consultant will do. Because when the project starts, not only the MM consultants are working, right? So along with us, FI, along with us, the FI consultant will be there, CEO consultant will be there, HR consultant will be there, production consultant will be there, maintenance, plant maintenance consultant will be there. So all the consultant will be there in the team. So each and every consultant will visit to their respective department and they will collect the information from them and they will prepare their blueprint document. And they will also set up the call with the customer and they will show them that is this is what we have uh, uh, collected all the information and now please uh, correct us if something went wrong, right? So once we have completed our activity, when the customers ask for many changes, now maybe after two days, three days, four days or a week, we will again set up a new call with the customer and we will show them that. So first we'll show them whatever the changes was asked to update in the blueprint document. So now this will be our second version of the blueprint document. So like that, the customer will go through this document again. Maybe something we have written, which they have not understood. So they will ask us to explain. So we will explain them. Okay. We'll explain them. Then again, now they have gone through this. Again, maybe something was missing. They said uh, uh, we, sh we should add something else in the process flow or something, anything they can ask for. So we will, uh, we will again, we will add them, add that in the business blueprint document and that will be our version three. So again, we'll set up a call with the customer. Now customer will go through the blueprint document again. Now maybe they will find, okay, now everything is looks good. Once it is done, once the once that is finalized by the customer, they will give the sign off. Sign off means they will 
give you the confirmation that business blueprint document is fine now because business blueprint document is a final document and based on that document only we start our realization phase realization phase means our configuration phase so now once this uh, business blueprint document is signed up by the customer we move to the next that is our realization phase so what is realization phase so in realization phase we start our configuration what configuration standard configuration and then customization if it is required so when we talk about standard configuration so who enable this standard configuration or who does all this enable uh, all this standard configuration we as a consultant we need to do it right so what do you mean by standard configuration standard configuration means we know how to create the plant right so sap has already given you a software and you know the path how to create the plant so that is your standard configuration. So you will follow the path and you will create a plant. In the same way, what are the different material type we have? How to define the number range, right? What are the different uh, type of procurement document we have? How to create the contract? What are the different contract documents we have? Right? So all these stand these are the, called the standard configuration. And customization. Now, customization means which is not part of the standard configuration. So, SAP has given you a software. Well, all these standard functionalities are there. Now, if suppose, apart from those fun standard functionalities, there are some requirement which is not available in the standard. That means now we have to customize that. So, we have to custom that. It means we have to create a new field. Maybe that will be a new field. For example, when you are uh, creating a purchase order, so when in when you are creating purchase order, there are different different fields. We have a field of a vendor, we have a field of purchase organization, purchasing group, company code, material, plant, so many things. Now in the same screen, they want to add a new field, and maybe that field name is uh, color. They want to just see the color of the material. Because as of now, we know when we create a material, we uh, or uh, when we create a material, we give the description of the material, right? But additionally, they want to see the color field there. So that whenever they will create an order, they will be knowing that for which color of the material they are going to order. So this can be your customization, right? So these type of requirements are called your customization, okay? Now, what is final preparation? So once, so what are you doing here? So first in preparation phase, we have discussed about the management activities, resourcing activities and all. Then blueprint document, we have gathered all the information. It takes around three, four months of time. After that, our realization start, our configuration, standard configuration and customization start. So who does all this customization? If it is a new customization, a vapor. The BAP consultant will be taking care of this. We will be taking care of the standard configuration. Okay. But the customization is done by the ABAP. Okay. Next, final preparation. Once the customization and uh, final, config, um, final configurations are done in the system, now we will get into the final preparation phase. So in ASAP methodology, in final preparation phase, we provide training to the users so that they can start test into the system okay so we uh, provide training to the users and before that we also check for the sit sit system integration testing that means whatever configuration we have done we have done from mm point of view fi consultant have done all their configuration sd consultant have done their con uh, configuration pp consultant have completed their configuration now all the integrations are working um, properly or not then now when we provide training to the users, we ask them to test it. So UAT means user acceptance testing. So now the user will accept that the whatever testing they have done is fine. Then only your testing will complete. That is your final preparation. And you will plan for your cutover activities and all. And finally, the go live date comes. So go live means um, you have started your project maybe almost one year or two years back. And today you are going to live it. Uh, live with so that the uh, your um, users will start using the SAP system. So that is your go live activity.
Okay. And once the user will start using the SAP system, once the system is live, means it is it will be in production. So we have discussed about the development quality and production system, right? So now here you can compare when the stand that when this realization phase starts, means they will do it in the development system. Okay. And then they will test it in the quality system. And when we are into go live means they will use the production system. Okay. And then once it is live, the users will start using the SAP system. After that, we provide support. Support for a particular duration. After that, that can be extended. Maybe one month or two months. But after that, it can be extended to one year or two year or five year also. It depends. Okay. So in support, what we do, we, we as a consultant, support to the users. What support? Whatever their day-to-day -day issues are coming during their uh, transactions. So that is the that is what we discussed about the uh, type of project as support project and what was the role of the support consultant. So these are the different phases we have. Preparation, business blueprint, realization, final preparation and go live. So this is the method which was preferred for the ECC system. Now, when we are working on S4 HANA, SAP suggests to work on the activate methodology. So this is also a methodology where we start working on our projects. So when we now, what is the difference between these two? We'll talk on that. But let's first complete what is this activate methodology? Because you, you should know, because if you go for any interview, any interviewer can ask nowadays. If you will tell them that you are experienced in S4 HANA, and you have worked in implementation, they will ask, have you worked on activate methodology? Because S4 in SAP, SAP suggests to go for S4 HANA uh, team to work on activate methodology. Okay. Now, what we do here? So in activate methodology, we have different, different phases again. You can see prepare, explore. Now, when I will show you the comparison, there you will see. So here, additionally, in activate methodology, we have a discover phase. So what is this discover phase? So discover phase is there for the client. So when the client start planning to implement SAP for their uh, business, the first thing that from which uh, means, uh, first of all, they will try to check how the software looks like, right? So they will ask for the demo to the consulting team. And they will uh, check whether all their transactions, all their business process is working fine or not. So they will basically check for the SAP solution to fulfill their requirement. They will investigate the systems. For example, there is a company called ABC. ABC is a company. He is planning for implementation. What implementation? SAP. SAP is for another they want to go for. But first of all, they should know that they will try to know how this S4 HANA software works whether all their functionalities, whether all their requirements will fulfill in this software or not. That is important, right? So that is what the customer will think first. First, So what they will ask now, so they will connect with different, different company, all the IT company who implement SAP. And they will ask them to provide the demo. Show them how the process works. So first of all, we will send them the list of means the customer will send them uh, the list of questions that this is what we are expecting in the um, software. Can you show them? Can you show? Uh, can you show us as part of demo, as a, or any POC? Then they will say, okay, fine. Then the what the consulting team will do? They will prepare. It can be three, four companies, right? So they will show in the system that this is what the functionality we have in SAP as part of standard and this is what the requirement you, you have given. So we have prepared it and now uh, we, we can fulfill your requirement. Then the customer will uh, will think, okay, means uh, if all the requirements will fulfill, means this software is fine for us. So that is how they will discover this phase. So they will go through all the uh, demo process for different different uh, consulting team and finally they will select one consulting team based on their price negotiation everything and they will start their configuration so what is the next activity again this is the prepare preparation so there it was preparation right um, this was the preparation to in asap methodology now when in activate it is prepare phase 
So again, it is the same activity, management activities. The project managers or uh, your delivery managers will decide like who will be the team members, who will be working from on-site, who will be working from offshore, right? What will be their uh, timings, everything they will decide in this prepare phase. And then next is explore phase. So here in uh, ASAP, it is, called, it is called as the realization phase. But in activate, it is called explore phase. So this is the difference. So in explore phase, what are we doing? In activate methodology, we are starting our requirement gathering. The same thing we were doing there from the business users. So we will connect with all the users. The same activity will connect with all the business users. So if we are from MM, we will reach out to the procurement team and the store department. And we will ask each and every activity, whatever we are doing, how many plants, how many suppliers, how many local suppliers, how many domestic suppliers, how many import suppliers, what material we are purchasing, what are the different approval workflow we have. Okay, so all this information we will get and we'll prepare the document. That is all. So in this phase, we prepare our blueprint document, business blueprint document. Again, the same process. Once we'll prepare our business blueprint document, we will uh, set up a meeting and we will discuss with the customer and we will show them that this is how it is uh, prepared in this document. Please correct us if something is wrong. Then again, they will ask us to make some changes. Then we will update. Then again, a new version will be created. And then finally, they will give you the sign off. And then we'll start our realize phase. So in ASAP methodology, methodology, it was called as the realization phase. In activate, we call it as realize. That's it. That is only the difference. And here, what are we doing? The same activity, standard configuration and customization. So we are starting our uh, configuration and the customization. So customization is our new thing, which is not part of the standard configuration. And then once it is done, again, the same activity in deploy. In deploy, first we do the SIT, basically system integration testing. We test whatever configuration we have done and whatever configuration finance team is done or the PP or the SD, because MM is the integrated module. So if we are creating anything, if suppose we are creating a material for which um, account reference category we are creating, what will be the valuation class of that, right? So each and everything will be there. When we are creating a material for which division we are creating, whether the material which we are creating will be used for sales or not. So all these uses we will check in the system in the SIT part. And once system system integration is done, then we'll, uh, we'll provide training to the users and we'll ask them to do the UAT. So the same activity, UAT is ex user acceptance testing. So user will test it and they will accept with the evidence. They will take the screenshot. So there will be the test cases, so which will be written by the testing team for each and every activity. They will take the screenshot of that and then they will paste it there and they will confirm that the testing is done. Once uh, and after this, they will also plan uh, about the data load part. So data load part is very important where uh, in this deploy, uh, during deploy phase, uh, they will plan all the cut cutover activities, how the transactional data, how the master data will be transferred from the legacy system to the current version to the S4 system. Okay, so that is how everything will be done and then finally run. So there it was go live, it is called run. So the process or the activities are same. So here now in, in this activity, we are calling it in activate, we are calling run. And these are the, and in run, now the users will start using a set system. And after this same activity support. So the, now we'll provide support to the customer for a particular duration. So in between whatever the issues will come, we will take care of that. And we will support them during their business transactions. So these are the, different activities we have in activate methodology. Discover, prepare, explore, realization, deploy, and run. Okay. Now let's see the difference between ASAP and, D, uh, and activate methodology. So here you can see additionally what happening. So in, initially it started with ASAP with preparation, business blueprint, realization, final preparation, go live and support. Okay. Now here you can see in preparation phase, before preparation, we have discovered phase in active uh, in activate methodology. Even in ASAP also, they are doing it, but that is not mentioned as part of their method. 
obviously before finalizing any project the customer will go for the demo and all but in activate this is the methodology which is followed and in activate methodology when we work we work for the agile frame agile is the agile is a new methodology concept nowadays i'll not get into the deep of the agile methodology but here we have some you know uh, some process now uh, there is a difference now and this is a very important difference between asap methodology and activate methodology so when we were working in asap methodology okay once we have gathered all the information from the client we start using the system and we start our uh, standard configuration and customization maybe after 4 months 3 months or 4 months of time uh, once we are done with our customization or uh, the configuration we showcase it to the customer that is what the process we follow in asap methodology but in activate methodology it, it works in agile way that means whatever the configurations we are doing so here there will be a lot of the you know there will be the scrum master so scrum master will take care of all the meetings so every day what are the task we will have it can be every day or there will be a stand up call it, that every day one uh, 30 minutes or one hour of stand up call will be set by the scrum master and they will uh, you know discuss on that what will be the role of the user each day every day what are you doing what configuration you are doing what have you done in a week okay so the all this track will be there in this agile way so that you know it will be very easy for the customer so in a in activate methodology the customers are also looking into the system what are the transaction what are the configuration have done in a week in last 3 days what are what they have done how much development they have completed so they are they will have some track right so scrum master will have all the information how many cost uh, like you know uh configuration they have done maybe there will uh, the customer will ask to set up a call to showcase the configuration for a week whatever they have done then customer will see okay in a week this is the cust uh, cust maybe that they have started the configuration for enterprise structure and master data and this is done in one week or in two week of time so they will have the visibility that this is what it is happening in the system and this is how it looks like so in between if any changes required they can ask us to make change but when we are working in asap methodology we are showing the system to the client after 4 5 months so the visibility is Uh, visibility of the customer will come after four five months, right? They will get to know all the configuration and the customization, whatever we have done after four five months. But when we are doing it and we are showing it, it did so. It is kind of you know they will also be confident that okay, based on our requirement, based on our expectation, everything is working fine, right? So these this is the advantage of activate methodology over. asap methodology so whenever you are going for any interview you should know this phase and what happens during this phase so these are the phases of the inter uh, for phases of the implementation the discovery is happening then preparation in explore phase what happening in realization phase what is happening in deploy phase what happening in run phase what happening means you are knowing in and out of the phase that means you know the implementation project how it works okay once it is done now i just want to discuss some questions which are you know frequently i would say frequently asked question or these are few fixed question i would say for any interview both if you are looking if you are going for any implementation uh project experience or uh, for the interview and where their expectation is for the implementation definitely they will ask this question if you are saying that you have worked in implementation project your first question what is the gap you identified in your current project or in your previous project what is the gap or what are the challenges you have faced during your implementation project this is sure question if you are saying that you have a implementation experience you have real time experience uh, in implementation tell me what is the gap you identified what is gap and what is the what are the challenges you have faced so what would be your answer so when you are saying something gap you have identified in your project means something which was not there as part of the standard in sap system so we have done the standard configuration right 
So standard configuration is not your gap. That's, that is the functionality which SAP has given. SAP has provided that. What is the gap here? Gap means something which is not there in SAP. For that, you have done your customization. Got it? For example, when you are trying to create a material, let me show you if I can show. So when you are trying to create a material, what are you doing? So when you are trying to create a material, you are using a transaction code MM01, right? So you are, when you are going to MM01, you are selecting your material type. For example, this is my material type. And once you have selected your material type, then you have selected your industry for which industry you have worked on. You have selected your views, whatever views you want to select for. Okay. Then go to your organization level, select your plant. And now see, when you are trying to create a material, suppose you are trying to create a material called a laptop or a MacBook if you want to create or if you want to create a steel material with some number. Okay, so this is the material you are creating. So this is a standard functionality we have, right? And you are entering your unit of measurement as kg and material group something which you have maintained. Okay, but now when you are trying to create a material, your client will expect that when they are mentioning the description of the material with the number, additionally, they should have a field called color. So color is not a standard field here, right? So now we'll check with the vapor. We'll ask them, this is what the customer, vapor is our technical consultant, right? He will be taking care of this. So he will check if any possibility we have any field which is available in the system, which is not used, they can use that if that is part of standard. Like we have different, different fields, right? So what they can do, they can change the description of this field and they can use this field as a color. So they will check that first. If that will not work, definitely we have to create a new field here. We need, we need, we need to find a new customized field. Here. Means you are going to create a new field. You are customizing that. So this is the gap which SAP is not given, right? SAP has not given that field. That is not a standard uh, standard field, color. So if you can edit any name and you can utilize that field as per your requirement, if that is okay, it's fine. But if it, that is not possible, then you have to create a new field called color so that whenever you create a material along with the description of the material, here the uh, field name will be there as color and that name you have to mention. Okay. Now, when once you have done this, your job is not over. Now you have created a field called color. Now, when you will try to create an order, when you will try to create a purchase order and when you will enter this material, system will expect along with the description that so your client wants to see the name of name. So your client wants to see the that field name as well, right? In the purchase order. That means now if I'll go and if I'll create a purchase order, can you see any field here called color? If I'll enter a material, if I'll enter some quantity and some price, and enter your plant, something. Can you see any field called color here? No, that means this is also not part of the standard functionality. So this is the gap you have identified now. Right? So this is what you can answer in your clear hope it is clear to everyone because when we go for the interview these are the questions which are regularly asked okay so that is your answer for this question what are the challenges no no what are the challenges you have faced challenges can be your requirement gathering so when you were trying to gather uh, the requirement at that time, client was not available. You have faced a lot of issues during your uh, requirement gathering. Maybe one uh, the source was giving you the correct information. Other uh, guy, other uh, team member was on leave. Then he, when he is coming, he is giving you some other information. Maybe he is not giving you time, but you have to complete everything on time. 
maybe the language barrier will be there maybe you are from some other location you have visited to that location and you are not understanding their local language what they are talking on so there can be many challenges okay but remember this the uh, the example which i have given now next what is your role in implementation project or support project so when you are talking about role in implementation project means the interviewer will expect whether you have worked as a tester as a consultant if you are saying that i was working as a mm consultant then they will ask what have you done as an mm consultant what was your role what type of configuration you have done then you have to tell if you so it will depend now oh, how many team member were working when in in your project so you was working alone or two or three or four or five mm consultants were there if suppose four five mm consultant was there in the implementation what was your role particularly what was your role then you will tell okay I, i was responsible for master data so whatever the configuration was required uh, for master data point of view i was responsible for that what are the different fields are required what what are the mandatory fields what are the optional field so i was responsible for that so you have to be confident on that or if you are saying no i was responsible for the procurement activities i have done all the configurations related to the procurement so whatever you are saying you should be confident what was your role i was i was looking into the end to end process if you are saying end to end means you have done enterprise structure you have done master data you have done procurement you have done pricing you have done output type you have done inventory management everything you have done but because whenever you will go for interview always the interviewer will ask whether you are in which topic you are more confident and based on that they will start asking the questions so make sure if you are confident in master data tell them that you have you are you have a very strong experience in master data you have experience in procurement tell them that i have this i have good experience in procurement i know in and out of the procurement activities what we do what we not do how can we close the pew how can we open the pew how the approval rules are configured so i know it's in everything tell them that you are confident that that is how you need to answer the questions and always you show yourself as you know so and if you know if you don't know something tell them clearly that i don't know. or you can call like uh, i am unable to recall the answer politely you can answer this i don't know and that means don't say that i don't know so you should not answer like this right so you have to answer politely so that the interviewer also will think okay because see the interviewer also will not expect that you answer all the 100 question 100% answer if they are asking 10 questions if you are answering 7 to 8 questions they will select you that is what they want for or they, that is what they look for okay then they will ask what is the duration of the cutover activity in your project this is again important thing cutover activity where they are you are planning how many days it will take Uh, to upload their master data or the transaction data how much time it will take to close their open pos and all so that you need to decide what are the different type of master data they have what are, what are the different that data they have so data team will take care of this if data team is not there if you are responsible you have to do it. so on an average when you are talking about cutover you tell them around one month or two month of time sometimes if it is short project you can say it's just it was 15 days or 20 days of time so it depend on your project okay then how did you upload your master data and transaction data in a store on a system okay. so earlier when we were working in sap ecc we had uh, the tool that was lsmw2 legacy system migration workbench right that was the tool which we were using but in s4 hana we 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 are using ltmc ltmc okay so this is the tool which we are using to upload all the master data and transaction data in s4 on a system so these are the fixed question for any interview you go for any project interview they will and you have shown yourself as an experienced and in resume you have mentioned that you have worked in implementation project these are the fixed question they will ask anybody can ask you and this is how you need to answer okay so that is what i wanted to discuss today i'll come up with a few more questions i have the list of questions 
the, uh, the important questions and the sure questions which uh, definitely all the interviewers the interviewer will expect from the uh, candidates so i'll come up with uh, those questions and answers in details in my next video so whatever we have discussed please go through it if you have any doubt any issues any questions please comment our team will reach out to you and we will clear all your questions, all your doubts. Thank you everyone for joining this session. Thank you all.